AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. BMW posts a smaller than expected loss. The Vertare report shows a $2,500 profit gap for the big three. And Nissan wants more money from the Japanese government. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Wednesday, May 6, 2009, and now the news. BMW reported a net loss for the first quarter. Automobile production fell 34%. Revenue fell 13%. Working capital fell by 1 billion euros, and that translated into a net loss of 152 million euros. But that's not much of a loss, and it beat analyst expectations, so BMW stock price rose. Even more impressive is that by reducing inventory and cutting costs, BMW actually increased its cash flow by 5.6%, or by more than a billion euros, and a positive free cash flow of 220 million. All I can say is, wow, those guys know how to run a car company. A new study of the automotive product development process came out today called the Vertare Report, It documents how the Detroit three automakers have moved all of their small and medium-sized car development outside of the United States. Moreover, it shows a $2,500 profit gap between the Detroit three and their major Asian competitors. Vertari is calling for a new product creation infrastructure that can dramatically reduce the time and cost to develop new products. That report, a white paper and assessment is available from VertariLLC.com. And full disclosure here, I have been involved in helping prepare that report. And we have reported on this before, but now it looks official. Autoblog says that in court filings, Chrysler says its future lineup could include the Fiat Cinquecento, Grande Punto, and Panda models, as well as the Alfa Romeo Mito. They could all be built in one of Chrysler's underutilized U.S. factories. Along with these new vehicles, Chrysler's also likely to have access to Fiat's 3-liter diesel V6, its multi-air engine lineup, and its dual-clutch transmissions. Reuters reports that the Penske Automotive Group has announced interest in acquiring the Saturn brand. The company already has 310 dealerships and is the exclusive retailer of the smart car in the U.S. An acquisition of Saturn and its distribution network could significantly grow its operations. The company has not made a proposal to GM yet, but we're including this story because it involves Roger Penske, and that man makes news. Nissan is seeking 100 billion yen, or about a billion dollars, in aid from the Japanese government. According to the AFP, Nissan already received 50 billion yen from the government as part of its lending program to help Japanese businesses deal with the economic downturn. I keep hoping the people opposed to the big three getting government loans hear these reports. It's not just GM and Chrysler who need those kinds of bailouts. And here is one we just could not resist. How sweet it is. Scientists at the University of Warwick in the UK unveiled a race car that can run on biodiesel created from vegetable oil and chocolate waste. Other parts of the body are made up of renewable sources. The steering wheel is made of plant fibers derived from carrots and other vegetables. And the seat is made of a flax fiber and soybean oil. The race car is built to Formula 3 standards. According to the AP, scientists hope to get the car up to 145 miles an hour or 233 kilometers an hour when they test it on a track in the next few weeks. Actually, they've already gotten it up to 60 miles an hour or about 96 clicks. Coming up next, it's time for me to respond to some of your mail. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. And now it's time for some of your feedback. This is You Said It, where I get a chance to respond to some of your mail and comments. And you sure all had a lot to say about the new Ford Taurus show, mostly positive. 
EAB wrote in to say that after a bad experience with the Ford Windstar, he only bought Hondas and it would be a cold day in hell before he bought another Ford. But now he says, it's getting cold in hell right now. And the show, well, if I have the dollars in a year or two, I'll have one. Keep going, Ford, and it will be you, not Toyota, who's the 21st century GM. But Don from Royal Oak wrote in to say, I was thinking the show would be a bad blankety blank sedan. Then I lost all interest when they said automatic. For shame. And a number of you complained about the price of the show. Paul Crane says, that show should not be a penny over 35K. Shame on Ford. That's too much. And I'll stick with my 95 stick. We also got a number of props for Murray Feldman from Fox 2 in Detroit, who filled in for me yesterday. And I agree with all of you. What a pro. Murray, thank you for all your help. Hey, don't forget that all this week you can enter our trivia contest. All you have to do is sign up for our free email newsletter. I'll be picking the winner Friday on AutoLine Daily, so sign up today. And that's it for the top news in today's global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. AutoLine Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutoLineDetroit.tv.